Hi everyone, welcome to Water Tax with Stewie JP. I'm Stewie, you're not either any of these blokes. This is a tier 7 extravaganza. That's right, today's video is going to feature four tier 7 replays. All these tankers, all epic, but don't blink too much because some of these games are pretty fast and furious. Starting off with my old mate Criticus. Criticus from Life Clan in the SU100 M1. The SU100 M1, that's the one that leads to the, the version 4, I think, at tier 7. Have a look at it. I reckon it looks like a divi van. It looks uh, pretty cool. A rear turreted Russian tank destroyer as he fires, not, I think he was firing towards that T-54 lightweight. A T-54 lightweight at tier, tier 9 is going to be a little bit, uh, might be a little bit daunting to a tier 7 tank, especially a tier 7 pretty lightly armoured, um, well, lightly armoured, not too badly armoured for tier 7, but uh, up against tier 9 guns, I don't think you're ever going to... Uh, I don't think you're ever going to bounce too many shots against T9 guns. Griticus gets two shots into the T44, brings him down to very low health, does bounce the T54 lightweight before getting a shot into him. Now he's platooned up with his old mate Geordie Bro. Geordie Bro is no dummy. He's in the T71 DA. That's the auto loading American light tank at T7 as well. One zips the score. Griticus is trying to keep that Russian gun pumping. <laughs> he doesn't manage to sh penetrate the IS. He managed to penetrate the tier nines earlier, but not the IS. Artillery clearly looking his way. Let's have a look at this gun. He's sticking with standard rounds. 250 alpha damage, 212 penetration. That's not too bad. He found a pretty small gap there. You can see the uh, the aim dot just went green very, very briefly. 250 alpha damage, 212 penetration, 258 with APCR rounds doesn't quite manage to penetrate. What was that? The Nameless. Yeah, well, Nameless is going to be challenging to penetrate on the best on the best of days. Penetrates him that time. Takes him down to 806 hit points. 1,514 damage done. He's already done double the amount of damage of, of the hit points that he's brought into this game. 1,680 damage blocked. It tells me the armor. Maybe it's not too light, the armor. He's waiting for the Black Prince to die. The Black Prince was never going to last too long sitting right there out in the open. 3-2 the score on Paris. He doesn't want to throw his tank away. Not yet anyway, because there's still lots of enemy tanks to get through. Criticus on at 1747 damage done. 1680 damage blocked. A little bit of assisted damage. Starting to struggle penetrating the Tiger. He wants to get one more go at the tier 7 German heavy tank. That one goes through. He brings him down below 800 hit points. Picks up some assisted damage as well. He'll be thinking, I'm looking. I fancy myself here. Ricochets, but he keeps the Tiger tracked. Down to 300. Odd hit points. Looks like Geordie Bro just shot him. Geordie Bro shot him again. The IS-6 killed the Tiger 1. And the Object 705 killed the Nameless. Don't forget, this is a tier 9 game. Criticus right at the front of the battle. He's not stuffing around. He might only be in a tier 7 tank destroyer. But he's up the front. He's up the front. In this tier 9 battle, There's there was three tier 9 tanks on each team. The T-54 Lightweight, which Criticus had a hand of getting rid of. He's now gone back to the garage. The Conqueror and the Centurion 7 1, though, they're both still in this one. He'll be looking at the sides of these heavy tanks, thinking, Yes, stay there, boys. Stay there. And I'll take this damage all day long. Gets one into the Centurion 7 1. Bounces the return shot. That's another tier 9 shell that he's bounced. The side of the low. Thank you. No problems whatsoever. Brings his damage up to 3,281. Waiting for the gun to reload. Looking at the T-29. Another 212 hit points. He's gone. This is World of Tanks on easy mode. You might say it looks easy, but I think it's a testament really to the position that Critic has helped his team get him into where he can just farm damage all day long into the sides of these tanks. Bounces the Centurion 7-1 again. He'll be thinking about selling that tank after this game, I should say. If, I would say if, if he can't penetrate a tier 7 TD. Now he's not even trying that Centurion 7-1. And Criticus says, no worries, I'll take a kill for that. 4,172 damage done. 2,070 damage blocked. A little bit of assisted, not a little bit of assisted, 916 assisted damage as he continues to charge forward, searching for more tier 9 tanks to shoot. And he's going to see, look at the IKV-90B on 246. He thinks, that'll be all right. Jordy Bro gives him a friendly nudge, says, hold my beer, I've got this one. Jordy Bro's having a good game as well. Hasn't been lucky enough to pick up any kills, but Criticus has got it. Jordy Bro gets the kill on the IKV 90B. Type 59 takes out the T43, and Criticus says, Don't worry, man. 
I can shoot tier nines. Tier nines is my specialty. Geordie going in with the uh, flanking manoeuvre. No, is he giving up? He's giving up the weak prick. Look at him. He's just giving, he's just sitting there with his gun over to the ground. He's given up and gone home. Bane 66 from Kanga Clan. Well, he got the kill on Geordie, bro, but uh, not a bad result. Griticus from Life Clan. Look at that. It looks to me like about 5,000 hit points of damage. Let's have a look at the results. Yes, it's an ace tank and mastery badge for me. I'll make Criticus from Life Clan. I told you to be fast and furious, folks. I told you. I didn't say that was going to be a long, drawn out game. Uh, not too bad at all. Ace tank and mastery badge, bruiser medal, shell proof for all those shots that he bounced. Not bad when you're bottom tier TD in a tier 9 game. Fire for effect, confer it for shooting more tanks than anybody else. High caliber. High caliber. When you're a tier 7 in a tier 9 game and you pick up a high caliber, oh, look, I reckon you deserve. I don't know, half a dozen stubbies, something. S certainly, you deserve something for that. I reckon that's an epic performance. He topped the score charts by experience, 1,779 base experience. That's a pretty good base score. That's not with the daily double or the premium account multiplier. That is the base score, 1,779 hit points, uh, base experience. That's why he got over nearly 5,500 with his, uh, look, it might have been his daily double or his premium account or whatever he got. But anyway... 4,932 damage. That's nearly 5,000 damage. <coughs> More than double what anybody did apart from the T-54. Geordie Bro got second. Of course, when you're bottom tier, you, know, you, you do get a bonus to your uh, tier experience. And well, well deserved indeed. I only made 2,000 credits. I didn't notice premium spam in that one. But, um, look, it was pretty fast and furious. I didn't uh, really get a chance to look at how much premium ammunition he was using. But bloody hell, what a game. What an epic performance from Criticus from Life Clan in the SU-100 M1, the Tier 7 Russian non-turreted tank destroyer. Speaking of non-turreted tank destroyers, here's another one. Anyone who's been playing the game for a while will know this tank. This is the E-25. The E-25 on province. The cockroach, it's known as. And um, it's been driven today by Relore, Lord of Light. That's an in-game name that I absolutely love. Any Game of Thrones... Uh, fan will agree with me. He does get spotted early, so he goes for the hard cover behind this uh, behind this wall to minimise the chance of, of getting damaged. Of course, the E25 is a little bit peculiar. It does not just because it's got preferential matchmaking, but it's probably I would probably argue it's the fastest tier seven tank destroyer, possibly the fastest tank destroyer in the game. Preferential matchmaking and. Um, it's got a, a bit of a pure, pure gun, 75 millimeter gun, 135 alpha damage, so nothing like the SU uh, that we just saw. 135 alpha damage, 150 penetration, that's with standard, 194 penetration with premium rounds, which is APCR. <coughs> Finds a T21, and have a look at this rate of fire. This is what makes this tank pretty good. Normally, normally you bounce a few shots. You just got nearly 400 damage into that T21 there. That's a T6 American light tank. That's what would have spotted him early when he uh, when he got to this position over here. He would have probably made a beeline from the base straight up to these bushes, and that's why he spotted the Law Lord of Light in his E25. Now, moving up towards these bushes. Now, there were some changes with tank destroyers and camouflage mechanics. Probably a year or two ago now. It was certainly a while ago. And uh, tank destroyers used to... Tank destroyers used to... Um, have a better than normal camouflage rating, even after they fired. Now, the E25 didn't lose that because it was a premium tank. They didn't want to nerf any premium tanks, so it didn't lose that uh, bonus camouflage rating. Now, R'hllor, Lord of Light, he's getting a bit nervous over here on the western side of province. The enemy team have had a massive push up here, and he's sort of stuck here. The friendly team, his team, are all cowering in the corner. Let's make the minimap a little bit bigger. Have a look at the minimap. This is... And the chat is, is is reflective of what's happening on the team. The KV-1, or the two KV-1s at tier 5, this is a tier 7 battle, remember. The two KV-1s have left the spawn. Um, as has Rallor Lord of Light in the E-25. Everybody else, everybody else thinks they're in artillery, including the top tier T-29. So Rallor Lord of Light saying, oh well, I'll just keep shooting and farming some damage. Get shot and lose his commander to the KV-1. Fix his commander because that's really going to affect his view range. <coughs> and looking at the, at the minimap, uh, 
it's going to be up to a Law Lord of Light with his commander to, to spot the enemy too because nobody else is apart from the KV-1 on the eastern side of the map. Enemy KV-1 goes down, Carrera in the KV-1. The Law Lord of Light picks up his second kill. He's got 12 standard rounds remaining, 36 premium rounds. You can see he's running chocolate and that's going to greatly help his view range, his rate of fire and all that kind of jazz. But also with the binoculars, that's also going to help, his, help him out vision some enemy tanks. As far as I'm aware, I haven't played many games in my E25, but as far as I'm aware, the view range of this tank is pretty good for a tank destroyer. Now, he is in a position where he's a little bit outnumbered. The top tier heavy tank is still back at base, one square away from the three artilleries. That uh, that says something. Maybe maybe the guy in the T29, um, maybe he's got... Maybe he's got XVM and it's a low chance that he's going to win this game. And so he's, he's basically given up. I'm not sure. Relore Lord of Light sticking with uh, APCR rounds. Continuing to get some assisted damage. I don't think he got assisted damage on that one. The IS goes down to the Dicker Max. And still the T29 is back at base. They're winning 7-4. They're up by four tanks. And the team are still in... Apart from the KV-1 and the Crusader. Who are, who are credit where credit's due. They're doing it. They're, they're at least trying to advance. Looks like uh, artillery and maybe a few TDs are shooting into the AT-8. We're a lot of light on three kills, 1726 damage, 1494 assisted damage. And um, showing no signs of slowing down. The AT-8 gets taken out by the Stug. That brings the score up to 8-4. And still, the team are not leaving the base. Maybe, maybe there was... Maybe there was a lightning strike. Maybe they all disconnected at the same time. I would find it very hard to believe. That, uh, that this is good gameplay. Have a look at that northeast corner. The Stug's decided, yep, I'm going to make a move. Look at the Stug. The Stug's moving. Somebody's going to move. He's going to move. T29, he doesn't want to move. For a little lot of light on three kills. He's saying, well, he's probably starting to think. There you go. The enemy KV-85 crashed and artillery killed the enemy Stug. That's the western flank taken care of as far as we're aware. Now, for a little lot of light in the E25, I don't think he's spotting the T-34-85. He's certainly not spotting the T-21. Um, but the remaining enemy tanks are three artilleries. So he's thinking, why not? Still got APCR loaded. Please don't fall off that cliff. That would be so. That would be so awkward. Not good for the replay either. Sees the T-34-85M as a pretty juicy target. He does switch back to AP because why would you waste your premium edition on uh, on something like this? But um, <coughs> the last shot doesn't hit. The GW Panther kills it. He gets some more spotting damage, up to 1,700 spotting damage now. Now it's time to get this cock. Oh, that was a brave. Get this cockroach to find these artilleries. Auto aim's fine on the M41 HMC and two shots is enough to confirm his fourth kill. And still the T29 is back at the base. I don't want to name and chain PHON1251, but that is a shit play. Maybe he's AFK. Maybe his missus came out and said, let's go for a little bit of a hanky-panky. He finds the Crusader and auto aims on the Crusader SP. Not sure what happens with the first um, with the first bullets, but uh, the, the rest of it went through. Gets his fifth kill. That just leaves the T-21. The M44 got taken out by the Stug. That's the same Stug who did leave the base, not like the T-29, who's still back at the base. <coughs> but he's on a kill, so he's certainly playing this guy. If this guy was AFK or disconnected, I'd, under I'd totally understand, but he's not. He's got a kill, so he must have... Uh... Anyway, looks like the T-21 is not going to poke out. Dickamax gets killed by the T-21. Looks like the Crusader is not going to go for it because the Crusader's on very low hit points. T-29 still back at the base, looking after those artilleries. What an absolute legend that guy is. The Law, Lord of Light, in the E-25 on five kills, 2,834 damage, 160 blocked, 1,701 assisted damage. And he's thinking, hang on, there's a top gun up for grabs here. Those guys aren't going to get him. I'm going to push on him because I'm on, he's on 420 hit points. He can afford to take a couple of shots from the T21. From memory, the T21 is pretty low. He's not having a bad game. He's got more kills than anybody else on his team. But he'll probably be sitting there going, fucking hell, what the hell? He asks, he says to wait. The artillery says, well, he wants the top gun. Can't say I blame him. And we're all Lord of Light coming in for the charge. Coming in like a wrecking ball. 180 hit points left on that tank. So it's going to take two shots to kill him. Looks like the PZ is... No, the PZ doesn't want to get shot either. They're doing the right thing. Letting him get the... Um, 
letting him get the top gun because he certainly deserved it. Especially how long it took for everybody else to get out of the base. Except for that T-29 who's still guarding artillery. Not a bad result for my old mate Relor, Lord of Light. In the E-25, that's a preferential matchmaking tank. The German preferential matchmaking uh, premium uh, tank destroyer. Ace Tanker Mastery Badge, Bruiser, Spider Medal, Bruiser, Duelist, Fire for Effect, Bascucci's Medal for killing those two artillery, Scout Medal for all that assisted damage, High Caliber, Sniper, Top Gun, you name it. He got the whole lot. Well deserved win. A very, very well deserved win indeed. Um, not only did he, did he, um, not only did he carry the hell out of that one, he also topped the score charts with 3,096 hit points of damage. 1529 base experience, 6 kills, he fired 29 shots, 26 hit, they all penned, 1700 assisted damage, not too bad. T29, look, even though he didn't lose base, he still did better than quite a few players, but uh, including this guy, I wonder what happened with this guy, maybe he abandoned the battle or something, because he got all zeros, but I'm sure he... Sure he did something. Uh, the T29, well, well done, man. Well done for looking after those artillery so well. Nearly 20, over 21,500 credits with the premium account. The Lord, Lord of Light in that eight-minute game on Province. And he still reckons it's a shit map. And look, that was terrible gameplay by uh, by a lot of those players. But congrats to the Lord, Lord of Light. That was a good, uh, that was a very good result for him in the E25. Now, don't blink. This one is going to be really, really fast. It's Criticus again. This time he's flying solo in the AMX 1375. Spoiler alert. This game goes for less than six minutes. Quick quick look at the gun, 75 mil. That's where the Tank gets his name from, the 1375. 135 alpha damage, 144 pen with standard, 202 with premium, which is APCR. He's going for the hill on Himmelsdorf. Griticus is no dummy. He's top tier in this one. Three tier 7 tanks on each team. Griticus in the AMX 1375. There's an AT7 and a Comet as well on the enemy time. The P43 TER, which is the Italian tank. The AT7 and, of course, the WZ-131, the Chinese light tank. He does get spotted. He finds two of those top tier tanks up there. He's got the Comet to back him up. The Stug's already gone down. And um, he sees the opportunity to shoot some tanks. Puts two in. One into the Jag, one into the PT, P43 TER. I reckon that WZ might be counting Criticus' shots before he starts popping out. The light tank shoots. Criticus chooses that moment to put two into the Jag Panzer IV. Reloads, lets his teammates know just a 13 second reload because there's only four bullets in that clip. 1 2 is the score. He's going to have to keep that gun seeing if he's going to win this game. The P43 TER, top tier, top tier tank just around the corner. Looking to get an angle on the little Italian tank. Puts one into the Mumbo Italiano. There's the Jag Panzer. He can kill the Jag if he if he can get some shots in. There's one. And of course, this bloke's in his way. Gets the gun depression. Shoots again. Pulls back. Is he going to reload? I would be. He is. And the score is 2-2. One kill to Criticus. 873 damage done. It's a quick reload, this bad boy. Now they've got the numbers. Now they've certainly got the numbers on the hill. However, a lot of these tanks will be trying to snipe from the hill. Gets shot once by the WZ-132. Unloads his clip into the Chinese light tank. But uh, his teammates come in and seagull that kill. 3-2 the score now. 1,310 damage done. He's nearly reloaded. Looking at the P-43 TER. Another top tier tank. Let's see if he can get himself a kill this way. Puts two into him. Three into him. One more won't be enough. Yes, it will. There's his second kill. 4-2 the score now. Reloading again. And they comprehensively own this hill. Looks like he's going to not stuff around. He's going to help the PZ try and roll these guys on on the hill, they're just kicking back there, a T5 and a T6, maybe kill the tier five, tier 5 first, it might be an easier one to do, puts two into the tier 5, two into the tier 6, now he is caught a little bit out of position reloading, does get shot once by the M4A3E2, 6-3 the score though, he'll be reloaded in no time, gets around behind the building, I'm moving my mouse around, trying to help him, but uh, he doesn't need any help from me, that's for sure, 6-4 now, as the SU-85 goes down, he finds the SU-100Y, will a full clip be enough to kill the SU-100Y, possibly not, 
Uh, he's reloading again. This time, because he's run out of standard ammunition. I didn't even notice that. That's the thing with autoloaders. If, you, if you've got an odd amount of bullets down here, you do you get forced to reload sometimes. You only had two, two standard rounds. Starts to unload on the SU-100. Why now? That's two shots into the Russian tank destroyer. Third shot is the kill. Reloads again. Now, he's only got 13 rounds remaining. It, you'd hope it would be enough, winning 10 to 5, but who knows? 13 rounds remaining is only just over four clips. Make it three clips. Less than four clips. T-34 is kicking back here like, uh, I'm not sure what he's trying to do. T-34 on um, pretty low health. Pops it for the fourth kill. Finds artillery. Now, two should be enough here to get rid of artillery for his fifth kill. He's got one round remaining. And he's looking at that T-150, hoping that it will be another kill. It is. That's the top gun. And this time he's not getting robbed. This time he knows what he's doing. Six kills to Criticus. 3,391 damage done. 394 assisted damage. He's got nine rounds remaining. Who knows where that M4 improved is. He's down to 199 hit points. He's already getting ready to send me the replay. There's the M4 improved on... Is that full health? It's pretty close to full health. He's on his side. Oh, well, you've got to take the good with the bad, my old mate. And well deserved for a... <laughs> for a seventh kill. you got to take the good with the bad. Reloading again. There's the AMX. He gets this. This will be a Radley. Uh, hopefully. I don't, nothing against the Jag Panzer 4, but hopefully the Jag Panzer 4 gets killed by the AMX. Jag Panzer 4 puts one into the AMX. Where's the AMX? Puts one into it. He's going to get a Radley. No, he doesn't quite get a Radley. Doesn't quite get the eighth kill, but he'll be happy with that. 15 to 6, seven kills, nearly 4,000 damage at tier 7. Wow. What? An ace tanker. Let's have a look at the result before we move on to our fourth and final replay. It's an ace tanker mastery badge for Criticus. Bruiser medal, fire for effect, high caliber, top gun. Look at all those tanks that he got rid of. He did it on his own. 3,890 damage, 7 kills, 1,501 base experience. Nobody else hit 1,000. The KV-2 came close at tier 6. So did another tier 6, the T-150. But nobody else came even close to 1,000 damage. He got 3,890. That's 3,000 more damage than the bloke who got second. Wow. He fired 32 shots. 31 hit. They all penetrated. Ace tanker mastery badge. Criticus from Life Clan. What an absolute legend. 3,890 damage. A little bit of assisted damage. Didn't get, it didn't get any more assisted damage than that because nobody else was doing damage. You can't get assisted damage if your teammates don't start shooting. Wow. What an ace from Criticus from Life. Well done in the AMX 1375. That's the uh, that's the tier 7 French auto-loading light tank. We've already, we've already um, been through that. Wow. All I can say to that is wow. Okay. Let's move on to our fourth and final replay. This time, featuring the Oni, the Oni at tier seven is probably the most. Would it be the most heavily armored tier seven tank in the game? I'm not sure. Maybe the IS could be the most heavily armored. It's certainly the biggest tier seven tank in the game. Let's have a look at this bad boy. We're on Ensk. We're looking at Psi 91 from Kebab Clan. Probably one of the most ingenious names for a clan I've ever seen. Kebab Clan, Psy, Psy 91 from Kebab Clan. Platooned up with his old mate Panzerquat. Now these two have been uh, involved with Get On Board Studios for some time. The Oni fires a derp shot. He did bounce the Panther M10 then, unspotted. But uh, what what ammunition has he got here? 149.1 millimeter, high explosive, type 96 round. 910 alpha damage for 75 penetration. Of course it's a heat round. It looks very, very similar to what's on the KV-2. Premium rounds are a bit more pen, a bit less damage, 150 pen for, for 700 alpha damage. But it looks like he's going the derp option in the ONI, and why not? The T-71DA on the enemy team's come up for an arty one and helped get rid of a couple of tanks, the Skoda T-25 and the AMX-13F3. And the T-71DA goes down as well. That's what I'm talking about. That's what a derp gun can do. 477 damage and a kill into the T-3485M. Now, we don't know if his blind shot towards the Panther did anything in this game, but that's the first step in... Um, <coughs> that's the first step in retaking this battle on Ents. That one sounded pretty juicy for another 408 and a critical hit into the M6. 
at SU100 will be looking a little bit nervous as Cy91 from Kebab Clan starts to line up the tier 6 Russian tank destroyer. It looks like he was waiting to, to shoot himself before getting the hell out of the way. 2-3 the score now, only down by a tank. <coughs> looking for looking at all these tanks, deciding which one to shoot. Maybe that's the hardest decision you'll need to make in this game. Who knows? They're only down by one tank, which is in the 09 with the derp with the derp cannon. That could be one shot, could be the difference between one tank. Down by two tanks now, two to four, as he puts one into the side of the SU-100. Takes him down for another 480 points of damage. VK-45 02A confirms that kill. This is a tier eight game. What is it, three tier eight tanks on each team? The IS-6B, Centurion, 5-1, and the Charioteer on the enemy team. There goes the Panther M10. No armor on the back. That one would have penetrated, no problems. 869 damage into the premium tier seven German medium tank. Five all the score now as the T-43 goes down on the other side of the map. And it looks like it's Cyanide One's job over here to get rid of these remaining tanks over here. IS-6 shoots with HE for 51 hit points. Side ID1 will be happy about that. That, that. that will tell him that the IS-6B has given up and probably maybe doesn't know what he's doing. Somebody else shoots the IS-6B with an HE round. Aiming for aiming for the top of the Kapola. Gets him for 395. That's not too bad considering he was shooting at a turret. Takes him down to... Well, now he's down, so absolutely stuff. All Panzerquack comes in with the P-43. Picks up the kill, or helps get rid of the kill. 10-7 the score now, and they have clearly cleaned up the middle. Or the, or the, the maybe not the middle, but maybe the, um, the city, I suppose. Or the town, you would say. Panzerflag aims, doesn't quite land on the Centurion 5-1. That's the Australian tank, the tier 8 premium British medium tank. Now that Centurion 5-1 is protecting the cap. The SU-100 and the Dicamax are going in to try and get a reset on the, well, it's going to be a charioteer. What else could it be? It could be a Cromwell. There you go. 318 into the side of the Centurion 5-1. Brings his damage up to over 3,000. 3,119. 525 damage blocked. 172 assisted damage. And he's got to go for it. He's got to risk it for the biscuit. 20 seconds until they cap it. The Charioteer goes down, resetting the cap. And there's still one tank left on the cap. It'll be the Cromwell. Now, there's no use chasing the Centurion in the um, in the O'Neill. But, uh, well, why not? Shoots him, sets him on fire. Does get a damage ammo rack. Quick tap of the 4 key repairs the damage ammo rack on the Oni. I'm a 5 key kind of guy myself, but your mileage may vary. Just the Achilles left now in this game. He rides over the top of the trains. That is, is the T-150 says, hey, I've never seen that done before. I can <laughs> do that as well. I've got to say, I've never seen it done before either. Now, this big, lumbering, slow Japanese heavy tank, the Oni, Side 91 from Kebab Clan. Platooned up with Panzerquack on three kills, five kills between them. That Achilles will be sitting in the corner just waiting for the inevitable, hoping he can get one shot off before he dies. He doesn't even aim, he just shoots, kills. You sure it's not Russian, that gun? Maybe it is the KV-2 gun and uh, not too bad at all. An epic victory for Side 91 on Ensk, this time in the ONE. Um, what's the result say? So the result says Ace Tech a Mastery Badge, Bruiser Medal, Arsonist for setting the vehicle on fire. That would have been the Centurion. Uh, fighter, Fire for Effect, High Caliber, not a bad result. Four and a half thousand damage, four kills, 1595 base experience. So it looks like that blind shot at the beginning didn't go through because that's what his in game damage counter said. 11 shots fired, nine hit, they all penetrated. And that gave him uh, an Ace Tech Mastery Badge. Have a look. Nearly. Over 56,000 credits with a premium count. That's after tax in that game that went for less than six minutes. What a game on Etsk. Thank you very much for the replays. Criticus from LifeClan in the AMX 1375 and that uh, little Russian Divi Van kind of um, tank destroyer. Psy 91 from Kebab in the Oni and Relore in the E25 in that really weird game in Province. Once again, thanks for watching, everyone. Take care and see you all next time. Mm -hmm.